Hi everyone, I'm back. And today, today Gina Young is going to show you all how to make lasagna. Yes, we're having lasagna today at the Young's house. Here's what you will need. All right, let's put this camera down. You will need ricotta cheese. Now, honestly, the ricotta cheese is optional. If you're a person that says, oh no, Gina, I don't like ricotta cheese, then by all means, you don't have to use it, okay? You will need cottage cheese. You will need a green bell pepper, as well as an onion. You will need two eggs, two large cloves of fresh garlic. You will need a bay leaf parsley, sea salt, cracked peppercorns, red chili pepper flakes, and that's optional, garlic powder. You will need basil and oregano. And you also will need tomato sauce, okay? I like to use spaghetti sauce, and these are eight ounce jars, and I have three jars, okay? Two of them are chunky, uh, let's see, they are chunky and mushroom and onion. And the other one is tomato and basil flavor. But hey, never mind that because when I get tomato sauce, honestly, guys, I buy the cheapest spaghetti sauce and I bump it up on my own. Absolutely, I'll do. And I'll show you how to do that. You will need lasagna noodles, okay? And I normally use one packet and a half of the lasagna noodles, okay? So let's come over this way. You will need Parmesan cheese. And the Parmesan cheese that I like to use is the kind that's over here in the can. And you will need Italian style cheese. And this Italian style cheese has mozzarella, smoke flavored provolone, Romano, Parmesan, Fontina, and Asiago cheese in it. This is my go-to when I'm making a lasagna. Now, honestly, if I go to make a lasagna and I already have some type of shredded cheese in the refrigerator, I'll just use that. Okay, so over here in our pan, I have three pounds of ground beef. I'm going to turn this on to a medium high heat. We're gonna take our spatula and kind of chop up your beef so we can get this to start browning up nicely okay and during the cooking process you'll go back and chop it up just like this okay so that you can get very fine pieces because you don't want huge chunks when you're making lasagna because we're not making meatballs right we're going to want this meat sauce to be nice and smooth small pieces of meat and nice and flavorful when's the last time you all had lasagna let me know in the comment section below when the last time you had lasagna and how did it taste absolutely lasagna is something that a lot of people they really don't make unless maybe it's a holiday but i feel like like today is tuesday Lasagna is so easy to make. It doesn't have to be a special occasion around here for us to have lasagna. Because it, it looks like it requires a lot of ingredients and a lot of time. But it takes no time. And it's so quick and simple. And I'm going to show you all that today. Okay. So, let's take a peek over here at my beautiful wok that you all know that I love so much. And this is the Wolf Gang Puck collection of the uh, pots and pans that I love to use. It was a gift. My father bought it for me as a gift years ago and I absolutely love this set. I know a lot of you ask, where do you get the wok from, Gina? Because you all that know me, you know I use this wok for everything, not just Chinese cooking or stir frying. I use it for absolutely everything. But the Wolfgang Puck collection, that's what that is. So I have water in here. And that's going to be for us to boil our lasagna noodles. And what I need to do, we're going to go ahead 
and put us a little bit of oil that's just a little bit of olive oil put that oil into your water okay and then I'm gonna grab the sea salt here and you want to season up your water anytime you're making potatoes or you're making some type of noodle season the water okay because you don't want bland tasting noodles either okay all right, so what we're gonna do, let's set our camera back up over here onto the beautiful hamburger. I have the water going on a medium-high heat. We wanna bring it up to a boil before we put any of the noodles in. And those noodles will only cook for 11 minutes. 11 minutes will give you that perfect noodle. And I might cook it a little less than 11 minutes, maybe eight minutes. Because what I want you all to realize is that we're not aiming for the noodles to get completely done. And the reason why is because our noodles are gonna go into the oven and bake with the lasagna. All right, so now what you need to do, let's go ahead and season up our hamburger. All right, and then we'll get our vegetables cut. I'll show, I'm gonna show you all how to make some good lasagna today. You hear me? All right, now season your meat up with some sea salt. And don't use too much, guys. All right, put some cracked black pepper in there. Oh yeah, put the pepper in there. You need the pepper, and this is a lot of meat, so we're gonna put a nice amount of seasoning. And the worst thing that you wanna have is bland tasting meat. We're gonna put just a little bit of red pepper flakes. For those of you that don't like the red pepper flakes, hey, you don't have to put them in there. And it won't alter the flavor, it won't change it. It'll be delicious just without it, you hear me? Okay, let's go ahead and put us some garlic powder in. Absolutely, season that meat up. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and put our bay leaf in now, okay? Because I want that bay leaf to release flavor into the meat, and then we're also gonna use that same bay leaf in with our sauce, okay? So while this gets nice and browned, let's come over here and we'll start to cut up our vegetables. Lasagna is so fun to make. Make sure you all's hands are impeccably clean anytime you're in the kitchen. Okay, we're going to go ahead and chop up this green bell pepper. And what I like to do is I like to saute up my vegetables. Okay, I feel like when I saute up my vegetables, they taste better. Okay, I don't want to put now, there's sometimes that I will put a raw onion and green bell pepper in my dishes. But today I'm not doing that. Today, I'm gonna chop it up and I'm gonna saute it, okay? When you saute your vegetables, you actually get a different flavor from the vegetables, rather than just putting it in raw. Okay, try it sometime and you'll actually see. Now I'm aiming for kind of small pieces, but it doesn't have to be too small, okay? Because I don't mind biting down into green bell peppers or onions, especially when it's been sauteed up, okay? So let's go ahead and we're gonna chop this up just like so. Everything that I make in this kitchen is so easy, so much fun, and yet guys, it tastes so good. Do you hear me? I mean, I know I say it a lot, but here's the thing. It's so true. It's so true. Easy, fun to make, and it tastes delicious. Mm -mm -mm. I cannot wait to have lasagna tonight. So we're going to have garlic bread on the side. We're going to have a nice Caesar salad with our lasagna. And we're going to enjoy our evening. I'm going to go get my hair done today, and I'm really excited about that because my hair is a mess. And I want to get a nice deep conditioner. And I want to get my ends trimmed. When you get your ends trimmed, your hair stays nice and healthy and it grows like a weed. You hear me? Oh, absolutely. And most of all, I can't wait to get my hair washed. 
I tell you what, when I go and get my hair done and she's massaging my scalp, I could just fall asleep. <laughs> yes, I could. But normally what I'm doing is I'm using my phone and I'm looking at YouTube videos <laughs> while I'm under the sink getting my hair washed. I know. <laughs> And then I sit under the dryer for maybe an hour and I look at YouTube videos. <laughs> I do. Yes, I do. Okay, so we're going to continue to cut all of these. We're going to do our onion as well the same way. Get you some nice dices, not too big, not too small. Okay, our meat is over here and it's starting to brown up beautifully it smells very good mm, like the basil and the oregano we won't use that until we do you know until we start to season up our sauce because we're going to season up every layer of this lasagna we're going to season the meat and then we're going to season the sauce absolutely we are our bell peppers are nice and chopped up let's come in and take a peek in at a beautiful ground beef. Boy, is this ground beef nice and fresh. And it really smells so good. My word. Ooh oh, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. A lot of times when I make lasagna, I'll make hot wings on the side. But I'm not going to do hot wings today. I'm not going to do hot wings. I was thinking about making apple pies, fried apple pies. And we'll just see. All depends on how long I'm at the hairdresser. All depends on if I feel like it when I come back, okay? So we'll just see. But the fried apple pies does sound delicious, right? With some nice vanilla ice cream. Oh, absolutely. Okay, and then when you're browning this meat, keep making sure you chop it. Like I said, we're not aiming for big chunks. We want little tiny pieces in with our sauce so we can have a nice smooth sauce. All right, now while that, while that browns up, we'll just let it be. Let's come over here towards our onion. Let's cut up some of this onion. And if you're a person that doesn't like onion, you don't have to use it. If you don't like the peppers, you don't have to use it, okay? It's really up to your discretion. Or honestly, if you wanted to use a different color pepper, whatever you like to do, okay? So what you can do is you can follow these directions and then take out what you don't like. Now, for those of you that don't like cottage cheese or ricotta or cottage and ricotta, you don't have to use it. I have another video that I made a lasagna. If you all haven't seen it, check it out. It's an awesome video. But in that video, I did a no ricotta um, lasagna. And it turned out beautiful. So you don't have to use it. But my preference, definitely you have to have ricotta and cottage cheese or just ricotta. Okay, kind of whatever floats your boat. Okay, I'm going to chop this onion up. I'm only using half of it because that onion was so huge. But if I feel like I need more, then I'll just cut some more. No problem there. So let's cut this and see how much onion that I have. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got. This looks like I just might have enough, guys. Oh, yeah. And we do. And especially after I chop it down a little bit more, it'll make more onions. Oh yeah, that onion was huge. So what I'll do with the other half of the onion is I'll put it in um, saran wrap. I'll just put it in the refrigerator for another dish. I'm sure I'll make another dish uh, tomorrow and I'll need that other half of the onion. Yes, I will. Okay, so now that we have our onions chopped up, I think I'm going to chop them up a little bit finer, and I'll be back. Our hamburger's cooking up nicely, and it's actually almost nice and, nice and brown. And what you're going to want to do is you want to make sure that you get a colander and that you drain off all this oil, because the last thing that you're going to want 
is to have an oily lasagna. So we want to make sure that you drain this hamburger long enough so that you can get all of that oil out of the hamburger, okay? Absolutely. So then, if I can reach over the camera really quick, guys. Sorry. Let's go ahead and start on our lasagna. Our lasagna noodles. All right? So, you, they, they do have already uh, boiled lasagna noodles that you don't have to boil, and you can just assemble your lasagna without boiling the noodles. You're, you're more than welcome to use those, and they work out just perfectly because what they do is they cook in the oven, okay? So let me show you. Let's come over this way. Now remember, I put some oil in there, and I put some salt in there. Okay, and what that oil is going to do is it's going to help so that your lasagna noodles don't stick together because, because sometimes your lasagna noodles can stick together and that's the worst. But I don't want you all to worry about that. That's the last thing that I want you to worry about because by putting the oil in here, hey, they're not going to stick together. They're going to do just fine. Like I said, don't worry when you're in that kitchen. You hear me? If your lasagna noodle breaks, it's okay. It's okay if any of your noodles break, all right? Like that one? This one's already broken, and who cares, right? Because we're going to cover it up with sauce, and we'll have so many noodles in there. It's just fine. Don't worry when you're in that kitchen, all right? You just believe, have faith, and know that God is in that kitchen with you, and every dish that you make, is going to turn out right. You hear me. And what I want you to do is put your heart, your foot, and your soul, and everything you have, and every dish that you make in your dishes will turn out perfect. Now this is one full box that I've put in. Now you can see as I put each noodle in, what I'm doing is kind of stirring them around, okay? And that also helps when you first put them in for them not to stick together. So just go in, take the time, and if you just have a regular fork or whatever you may have, just go ahead and move them around, okay? Because if you just put them all in, you don't touch them, oh, they're definitely going to stick even if you put oil in there, okay? You all can understand that, absolutely. Okay, so now we just leave them alone and make sure you want to wait until your water is boiling before you put those in there. Let's look at this beautiful hamburger. Oh, yeah. My word, look at this hamburger. Jeez, it looks so good. Mm -mm -mm. When you're stirring up your hamburger or chopping it, be sure not to chop up your uh, bay leaf because no one wants to eat a bay leaf, okay? The bay leaf gives off flavor, and then later during the cooking process, um, we'll take that out so no one has to eat it, okay? Or no one has to bite down into it. It's not fun to bite down into it, but it gives the best flavor, if you all can understand that, okay? Beautiful. Our hamburger's almost done, and then we'll drain that, and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, everyone, I'm back. And now what I like to do is go in with my ricotta. And I like to use a whole container. This is a 15 ounce ricotta. I absolutely love ricotta. And a lot of you might say, oh, I don't really care for it. I love it. You hear me? I make desserts with it and everything. I put it in my pound cake. It's actually delicious. Here's the thing. If you've had it the right way, you know, because so, so many people have bad experience where they just taste it in the wrong dish or just, you know, somebody didn't prepare it right. And if you've had that situation, you won't like it. But if it's prepared right, guys, oh my word, I'm going to taste this right now. I can't help it. Mmm, 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 mmm. I love it. Hooray! Mmm, mmm, mmm. And then this is a 16 ounce of ricotta. What a, I mean, not ricotta, cottage cheese. Oh yeah, baby. Get right on that there. And I'm gonna mix all of it. 16 ounce of cottage cheese and 15 ounces of ricotta. Now I like to keep the lids and the bowls of those two, wash them and I can use it for 
different things. I'm going to go ahead and crack two large eggs. And I'm cracking it into a separate bowl because just in case we were to get eggshells or your egg wasn't healthy, then you can toss it. But if you were to crack it in here and get eggshells in, you would never get the eggshells out. Okay? So what I'm doing right now is I'm giving my lasagna noodles a nice stir. And I'm making sure nothing is sticking. And they're not sticking, they bo they're boiling up nicely. Okay? Beautiful. Now, you want to put your eggs right on in there, baby. You hear me? Get them in there. Okay? And then, I like to put just a tiny bit of sea salt. Trust me, guys. I say a little bit. That's it. Just a little tiny bit. Okay? You're going to put some parsley flakes in. Oh, yeah. Trust me, guys. Hey, I know what I'm doing in this kitchen. <laughs> put just some parsley in there. All right, and then you just want to stir this vigorously. Get that ricotta and that egg well mixed into your, I think I'm going to use a whisk. Let me look down here in my famous drawer that we all have. <laughs> we all have one of those drawers, right? And get a whisk. That way I can get everything nice and well incorporated. Okay, we're going to do just that right now. Oh yeah, this right here is what makes it taste delicious. But like I said, if you don't like it, don't use it. Now your egg. The egg is something you definitely want to use, okay? Because the egg will help to bind everything together. And there's nothing worse than a lasagna. When you go to cut it, it goes flat, right? We like for our lasagna to stand nice and tall, about that tall, and stand up straight and be able to be cut into squares. And that's what this mixture helps to do, okay? And it also gives great flavor. With the cottage cheese, if you wanted to use the small curd kind, you can. If you wanted to use the large curd kind, you can as well. Okay? Yes, you can. This is mixed up well, and this goes into the refrigerator until we're ready to use it. Beautiful. You don't have to cover it up, but it's really up to you. Okay, everyone, you can see that I'm draining my ground beef in that one bay leaf in the colander, okay? And I'm just going to let it drain, 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 drain. You hear me? I have to let it drain because we don't want anything oily in this dish. All right. Let's come over here and I'll show you what our beautiful noodles are looking like. And they're actually, see how they're nice and pliable? They're actually almost done. I'll take them out, right? I'm going to rinse them in some cold water. How, why are you going to rinse them, Gina? Well, I'm going to rinse them so I stop the cooking process. Okay? And when I rinse these noodles, guys, I'm going to put them in the cold water, and I'm just going to set them in a bowl. And I'm going to put just a little bit of cold water in the bowl. Okay, everyone, my noodles are done, and I'm running cold water on them. And I'm just going to put them in a nice bowl. The noodles are sitting in a bowl of nice cold water. Okay, everyone, so our hamburger is nice and drained. And now what we're going to do, you can see I have a frying pan over here with uh, some, fr some real butter. And we're going to turn that onto a medium-high heat. Okay, let me move out some of these spices. <clears throat> medium-high heat, and we're going to saute up our onion and our bell pepper, just like so. And I'm soaking my bowls that I had my ricotta and cottage cheese in so that I can use those later. I love to use bowls like that that have a lid too. I can put leftovers in. I can, you know, put the family's lunches in and they can take them to go. Okay. 
So we're just going to saute this up until everything gets, until the onions turn nice and translucent. And your bell peppers will turn a deeper green color and you'll see that they're turning nice and soft. And they're going to release so much nice flavor. Let's go in with some cracked black peppercorns. Season every layer of everything. Everything's going to be seasoned. Okay, just like so. And we can just let that go. Now I made some more water over here in my wok and I'm gonna do round about maybe eight more noodles. That's the box that I have over there in the back of the stove. That way I wanna make sure that I have enough noodles, okay? So that's one box that I have in the sink that we boil and I'm gonna use about eight of them out of that box. So I'm gonna make more water and I've salted the water. The water's almost getting ready to boil. We're gonna saute up these vegetables and I'll be back. Our vegetables are sauteing up just beautifully. <clears throat> and they're almost to the point where they're nice and translucent. As soon as they're translucent, we're gonna go ahead and put those in, put these in with our meat that we've drained. Okay, everybody, my vegetables are nice and sauteed. The onions are nice and translucent, and the bell peppers have got nice and soft. So here's what you're gonna do. Bring your meat back into the equation. And go ahead and put your sauteed vegetables right on in to your meat. <clears throat> Remember to always drain your meat. Let's go ahead and incorporate the bell peppers and onions, just like so, okay? And then we're gonna set this aside. <clears throat> I have those eight uh, lasagna noodles cooking over here on my left. Let's set this aside one more time. And then let's bring a pan that I have with olive oil. You can see I have some olive oil in there. Here's what we're gonna do. Take your two large garlic cloves that you've topped, chopped up finely. Put those garlic cloves down into this oil. And what we're gonna do, <clears throat> we're going to create a garlic oil. Oh yes, absolutely. A garlic oil, Dina? Yes, absolutely. And here's what's going to happen. I'm going to flavor up this olive oil and it's going to be so infused with that garlic flavor. And then we're going to pour this garlic and that infused garlic oil into our sauce. Guys, hey, listen here. I did not come to play when I got in this kitchen today. You hear me? I came to make some mouths water, and I came to satisfy my family. And also satisfy you guys in hopes that you will make this recipe and then let me know how just how much you enjoyed the recipe. Oh, absolutely. It doesn't get any better when you make garlic oil. Hoo-wee! And then you pour it in that tomato sauce. My word. Hey, Mm -mm. I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to say it. I'm going to let you guys say it. <laughs> make you some garlic oil, guys. Try it next time you make spaghetti. Or try it the next time you make marzetti. Or even lasagna. Absolutely. And it doesn't take long. What you don't want to do is you don't want that garlic to turn too dark. If your garlic turns too dark, it'll get really bitter. And we don't want that, okay? Once it starts to get a nice golden brown color and you can smell it really prevalent, you wanna go ahead and take it right off of that burner, okay? Which is right about now, okay? That garlic is fully cooked, all right? It's done. I'm just gonna set it aside until I have my sauce incorporated with my meat and then I'll let you know when's the perfect time to pour it in. Okay, everyone, now let's get down to the nitty gritty. Okay, let's take your pasta sauce. All right. And we have our meat here with that bay leaf and those vegetables that have been sauteed. And you want to pour your sauce in there. But here's one thing I want to tell you all. Hold on one second. Let me finish hitting this can. 
Here's one thing that I want to tell you. Make sure that you do not use too much sauce to where your sauce is running. Okay? And make sure that you don't use a sauce like ragu. Ragu is a runny sauce, okay? You don't want your sauce to be runny because your lasagna won't turn out right, okay? We want to aim for this sauce, this meat sauce, to be nice and thick. And it's up to you to make sure that it's thick and not runny, okay? So know how much you put in. It's better to start off with a little bit rather than throw a whole bunch in and you can't take away from that okay so just kind of eyeball it and you'll see now there's one ingredient that i like to use <clears throat> which is sugar now it's up to you if you want to use brown sugar or if you want to use white sugar you can use splenda but what it does is it kind of cuts the acid in the tomato okay so put you a little bit in. How much is a little bit? Oh, maybe a teaspoon or a tablespoon. It's really up to your discretion. Will it make it sweet? No, not at all. Okay, trust me when I tell you this, guys. I know. All of this meat, this is three pounds of meat. It's not going to make it sweet. But it will cut the acid a little bit for you. Because there's a lot of people that get heartburn, like my husband. And I feel like when I put the sugar in our red sauce, he doesn't have to say, ooh, I got heartburn, okay? So that's the reason why. Now, look at this sauce. Let me show you all. See how nice and thick? That's what you're wanting. Nothing runny, nothing runny, guys. Nothing runny, so make sure you drain that meat well and you don't put too much sauce in. Okay, I'm gonna turn my sauce a little bit above low and start to warm it up okay see how nice and thick let me show you just how thick see that this is going to help for you to have the most perfect lasagna oh yeah now let's go in with our beautiful spices you can use herb herbs de provence if you want it to okay i'm going to use oregano you can use fresh, or you can use dried. Put a nice amount of oregano in there. Absolutely, you have to have that. And put you some basil in also. Get you some basil in there, baby. Get in there. Okay, I like to use garlic powder. Even though I'm using fresh garlic, I still like to put that garlic powder in there, just to know it's in there. <laughs> Red chili pepper flakes. Put you a little bit in, not too much. You don't have to. If you don't like it, don't use it. It's that simple, right? It's that simple. Now, I won't put the sugar in until the very last, after we've tasted everything. That's cracked black pepper. And then, put you some sea salt. Not too much, guys. Just a little is all you need. All right? Look at this. My word, three pounds of meat. That's going to give you the perfect size lasagna. All right, and four, my garlic. I got that garlic. Ooh, do I have this garlic? I got this garlic. I'll make sure I get all my garlic out first. And then I'm going to put a little bit of the oil in. Okay? See, I'm making sure I don't put all that oil in. But just enough so it can you can see it see it right there oh yeah that right there my goodness if you all never had garlic oil infused lasagna well you have it now and you have the chance to taste it you are gonna lose your mind when you taste this oh it smells so good boy does it smell good you hear me mm, mm, mm. Now that I have everything nice and seasoned, I'm going to go in with a spoon. I'm going to taste what my sauce tastes like. Okay? Let's see if I'm happy with the flavor. 
because you have to be happy with the flavor in order to serve it to someone. So make sure you taste your food. Taste that, guys. Mmm, 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 mmm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, that's good. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Okay. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to grab my sugar. Let me close these spaghetti sauces up. I'm going to grab the sugar that I'm going to need. And you make sure you heat this on low. Don't heat it up on high. Okay? Because you'll singe the bottom of your sauce. Okay? Remember, we're going to reheat this in the oven. So you don't, you know, take your time. Heat it up on low. Let me get that sugar out of there. Get a clean spoon. All you need is that teaspoon or that tablespoon. That's all you need. We're making lasagna here, guys. We're not making cake. All right? <laughs> I know that sounds funny. <laughs> all right. So... We're going to let this bay leaf cook down in our sauce for maybe a good half an hour. I like to let my sauce cook down. Let it cook down and everything marry together. All right, so after a half an hour, I'm going to come back and we're going to assemble this beauty. Be right back, everyone. Oh, yeah. Okay, everybody, let's do this. We have our noodles that are drained. We have our cheese, parsley, we have our ricotta, and our cottage cheese, and our egg mixture, and our beautiful meat. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started. Now, the first thing that you need to do is take some meat. Make sure you get a lasagna pan. Okay, you can use a baking dish, but if you're going to use something like this, it'll say lasagna pan. Okay? And that way it'll be deep enough for you. You want to put a little bit of meat in the bottom just so your noodles don't stick. Okay? Now I'm not going to coat the whole bottom, but I'm just going to show you. Now, a lot of times when I make lasagna, sometimes I will use uh, tomato paste. If you feel like you need to make sure that your sauce is nice and thick, use a tomato paste. And a lot of times when I make it, I'll also use breakfast sausage. And I've made lasagna with pepperonis. So possibilities are endless. You could put chopped up zucchini in here. Whatever you want to do. Okay? Once you learn how to make the basic lasagna, you can put whatever you want in yours. You could do uh, eggplant. Absolutely you can. You can use turkey meat. You could use ground chicken. Whatever you want to do. And it'll be delicious, guys. You hear me? It doesn't have to be beef that you use. You could do an all-vegetable one with spinach, and it would be delicious. You hear me? Hooey! Okay, look at this. See that? Just coat it nice and well. It doesn't have to hit the edges or anything like that. Now, let's go in with some noodles, just like so, okay? And when you put your noodles in, let me show you a trick. All right, let me show you something that I've learned. I'm trying to separate my noodles, guys. <laughs> okay, so when you go in with your noodles, don't just put them side by side like this, okay? Overlap them a little, okay? By at least this much. How come, Gina? Well, it helps it to hold together. It helps it to hold together a little bit better than it would if you were just to put them side by side. Trust me, guys. Oh, yeah, you have to trust me. All right. So let me grab another noodle. I, let's see. I need to bring my noodles a little closer to me so I don't have to reach over the camera. Okay, see that? And make sure you have kitchen shears near you because see here where I don't have any noodles? I'm just going to put a noodle right there. No problem. If your noodles are broke or uneven, that's okay. Don't, don't make it a worry. Don't you dare worry. See how that's torn up, but it's okay. Hey, it's going to be some good food. You hear me? Just get the noodle on there. 
All right, I'm gonna cut this part where it's uneven, just like so. Oh yeah, there you go, baby. Get in there. Mm -hmm. So now, go ahead and take some cheese. Okay, let's see, I think it'll be better if I spread it with my fingers. Put you some cheese on that first layer of yours. And make sure that you've started to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Put your first layer of whatever type of cheese that you're going to use. Put it right down on top of that beautiful layer of noodles. Then, let's go in with our meat, guys. And be careful. You don't want to put too much because we, had, we are going to need meat to do other layers okay so just put a nice thin layer my goodness this sauce is so tasty i don't know how many times i tasted the sauce guys when i had the video on pause it's so delicious and it has just the right amount of flavors make sure you put that little bit of sugar in there even if you use splenda that's just fine it's okay if you use brown sugar do that fresh garlic that fresh garlic oil and you're in business. You hear me? You're going to have the whole wide world saying, where did you get that recipe from? You will. Trust me. <laughs> They're going to say, oh, my goodness. Can I have another piece? And you're going to be like, sure. And they're going to say, you want the recipe? And you all are going to say, look at Gina Young's site. <laughs> Check out her recipe. Absolutely. I hope you all are having a great Tuesday and I hope you all have a great work week. It's so beautiful outside here. I've opened up my kitchen window and, I, window and I'm just listening to the birds chirping. It's the most beautiful sound you ever want to hear. Go on with your ricotta and you put you some in. Put you some dollops in and you kind of just smooth it out. And don't worry if you don't cover the circumference of the meat because guess what will happen oh it's gonna spread out baby you hear me it will okay so just put you some dollops in just like so my goodness oh yeah just get that ricotta and that cottage cheese on there man oh man mm, mm, mm. now we're cooking this video was so much fun to make and I hope that you all enjoyed it. I really do. Absolutely, I do. Look at this. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, let's go in. We're going to put some noodles. Put you some noodles down once again. All right. And make sure you overlap it. Overlap it will help you to be able to cut it into a nice square. When you put it side by side, and I know I already talked about it, when you put it just like this, it falls apart. It goes, it goes splat, it just doesn't stay together. So you overlap it. That's why I do extra noodles. That's why I do the extra noodles. Because I need for my Lasagna to stand nice and tall and represent Gina Young's name. Absolutely. So I'm going in with my kitchen shears. And once again, I'm just going to cut that bottom so that I can feel this part. And then I'll take a little sliver. See that? Sometimes you have to do that. And then just put that on there. See that? No problems. Put you some cheese on there, guys. And put you a lot. Remember, we got three bags of cheese we got to work with. Put as much cheese as you want. You want this thing to be cheesy? Put you some on there. If you like Kobe Jack, put you some Kobe Jack on. You hear me? It's funny because when I was younger, and when I say younger, I mean much, 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 much younger. I made a lasagna, and I used Kraft Singles cheese. And guess what? We laughed about it, and I tell you what, that 
lasagna was so good. It was. You know, we were kids, but that lasagna was so spot on. It was delicious. Yes, it was. Mm -mm -mm. I can remember that. Wow. Okay. Get you some meat on once again. And I'm making this meat layer just a little bit thicker, not too much. Okay. Because we're getting towards the top. One thing that I don't like to do when I'm making a lasagna, because I've done it before, I've made a lasagna where my noodles and everything came way up to the top. And then I had to bend this up like that so nothing would spill over in the oven. So I learned. <laughs> so I learned quickly. Don't make your lasagna as high as you think you should. <laughs> It'll be just fine with three or four layers. You hear me? All right. You guys hear me. <laughs> I love you guys. I appreciate you all who watch, everyone who has subscribed. I appreciate the messages. And I have so much fun sharing my family's recipes with you all. Yes, I do. And I truly thank God for giving me the platform of YouTube so I can share my gift from God with you all. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay, keep on at it. And then we're going to put some more ricotta. Ricotta and cottage cheese on. I love saying different words. <laughs> ricotta. I get excited. All right, look at this. Put you some on there, guys. Put you a nice dibby dab on there. Oh, yeah, like I said, don't worry about it being spread out. It'll spread itself out. Mm -mm -mm. And this is going to be good. Me, oh, my. Ooh, this is going to be good. Mm -mm -mm. -wee. Oh, yeah. Keep on going, guys. Okay, everyone, this is our last set of noodles that we're going to put on. Last set, baby. All right, get on there. Get happy and marry into that ricotta cheese. Mm -mm -mm. I was going to make that last set, my last set of noodles, but I said I think I got enough sauce to keep going a little bit higher. And we're going to do just that. Okay, just like this. Mm. My husband is so excited for this lasagna. You hear me? Get on there, baby. Just get on there. Don't give me any problems. Don't fight with me. There we go. All right, I'm going to use my kitchen shears once again. Once again, I'm going to give it a nice push. Just a little push. I'm not trying to smash it down now. And then I gotta get dressed so I can go get my hair done. I've already done my makeup and took a shower. All right, so then let's put this on. Last bit of this sauce, guys. Get on there, baby. Get on there, and I'm going to spread this sauce out. This bad boy is going in the oven on 350 degrees. My word. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to spread this out. Now, when you put this in the oven, what I want you all to do, I want you all to put this in the oven, 350 degrees. I want you to put aluminum foil on. Aluminum foil has to go on top. Okay, because what that aluminum foil will do is it will help to steam and bake and melt your beautiful cheese. All right, then what I like to do, I'm not going to put, I'm going to put a little bit of cheese on the top of this. Okay, but when this lasagna is almost done, I'll take the aluminum foil off. Listen closely. And take the aluminum foil off and then 
I'll put more cheese on top, okay? And then that cheese will bake on the lasagna without the aluminum foil so that it can get nice and golden brown, okay? All right? Guys, mm -mm -mm. if you want to win somebody over, if you're trying to win somebody over, just make them happy or have a romantic night. Hey, make this lasagna. I'm sure it will work. Trust me, I know it will. <laughs> All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and use some, some of the cheese. But like I said, we're going to put more on. And that second set of cheese is going to go on when we take the aluminum foil off towards maybe the last 15 minutes of the cooking process, okay? And that's a whole bag that I have over there that I haven't opened up yet. That's what we'll use. Look at that. See, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Get Make you some frozen, uh, what am I trying to say? Frozen garlic bread. Just go and get you a nice baguette of garlic bread that's already made. Throw that bad boy in the oven and make you a nice salad on the side and you're set. You hear me? Hoo-wee. This is going in the oven. I'm getting ready to put aluminum foil on right now. Make sure when you put your aluminum foil on that you kind of pin it up a little bit. Push it up a little bit so that it doesn't stick to your cheese, okay? Kind of like this. Let me show you. See how it's kind of puffed up a little bit? Put your hand under there and just make it kind of puffy. Because if it sticks right down onto your cheese, what would be the use of putting cheese on if you're going to pull it up with the aluminum foil? It wouldn't make any sense. So push your aluminum foil up, close it up nice and tight so it can steam and everything can get nice and warmed up and melty and golden brown. For an hour, we're gonna cook this bad boy. 15 minutes before that hour is up, we're gonna take the aluminum foil off and put more cheese on. I'll be back, everybody. Okay, everybody. Our lasagna has cooked for 45 minutes and here's the thing would you just look at this would you just look at this beautiful goodness now here's what I like to put a little extra cheese in there oh yeah my goodness okay and now this layer of cheese we're gonna let it get nice and bubbly okay and it's only gonna take a good 10 minutes it might not even take that Okay, and now when we put this in the oven, it's not going to have aluminum foil, okay? The aluminum foil has done its trick. It's steamed and melted and warmed and done everything that we wanted it to do. And now we take it off and let this get nice and bubbly. My goodness, I'm going to use the, use the whole bag, Gina. And that is a 8-ounce bag right there on top. Hey, listen here. If you want some good lasagna, make my recipe. I'm sure to make you happy. Put you some parsley on there. How come? Because it's beautiful. Because Gina Young said so. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Get in that oven 350. Get nice and golden brown. We'll be back and we'll slice this bad boy up. Okay, everybody. Check it out. So what I did... I put this in the oven. It browned up in eight minutes, okay? Nice and golden brown. Put that parsley on it if you want it to be nice and beautiful. Let's let this cool down. As soon as it cools down enough, I'm gonna go ahead and slice a piece so you all can see just how beautiful and tall this bad boy stands up. Let it cool down and I'll be back. Hey, if you all enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so that you can be notified every time Gina Young uploads a recipe. Absolutely. Okay, everybody, I'm back. Look at this. And look down in there, guys. Look how beautiful. 
my word. Now, I really didn't give it enough time as I would like for it to be in order to cut it. I'm cutting it now because I got to run out of here and go get my hair done. Look at this, guys. And as always, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you all for watching. Have a great night. Good night. Taste that piece right there, guys. I love you all. Good night.